Good morning. Can you hear me back there? Okay. Welcome to the Department of Medicine Awards Day. Biggest day of the year. We come here to celebrate the accomplishments of our trainees, of our colleagues, of our faculty, but we most of all, we come here as a family to gather to celebrate academic medicine and academia as a whole. Now, every Thursday throughout the year, during the academic component of the year, I stand before you to introduce speakers. And before that, uh, I make some comments about people and about events that have occurred in history that may have impacted us in the way we think about biology, and medicine, healthcare, and even humanity. And so if that was one of those days, I would tell you about Max Stern, who was born on this day back in 1905, who was an Italian researcher who actually developed the vaccine against anthrax. If this was one of those days, I will tell you about Henry Foles, who was born on this day back in 1843, who identified that fingerprints were unique to each and every one of us, and we could identify people because of this. If this was one of those days, I could tell you about Werner Forstmann, who died on this day back in 1904, who with others obtained the Nobel Prize for Medicine or Physiology in 1916 for the work towards developing cardiac catheterization. And if this is one of those days, I would tell you about Pio del Rio Ortega. I always want to bring somebody with that. Pio del Rio Ortega, who died on this day back in 1945, who was a Spanish neuroscientist, son of a famous neuroscientist, and he described oligodendria. These people are famous. They change the way we think about what we do today. But instead of that, I want to talk to you today about an article that I recently read that came out in Pharos in the winter edition. You may have seen it. It's in the uh, Alpha Omega Alpha uh, magazine, and it was written by Dr. Edward Halperin. You might recall that name. For those of you who have been here more than three years, you might recall that Dr. Ed Halpern was our dean of the School of Medicine, who is now chancellor of uh, the New York Medical College. And Ed wrote an article about Dachau. As you know, he's Jewish. He's very interested in medical history. And Dachau was opened from 1933 to 1945. About 228,000 people went through that Nazi camp and over 30 to 40,000 are thought to have died through those years. And the story goes like this. I want you to bear with me because it's only until the end that you'll find why this is relevant today. The story goes like this. Immediately after the liberation, the Allies sent this young American soldier, David Corsby, from, New from North Carolina, to visit the camp. And in his visit, he found this older gentleman who had lived there for a number of years who gave him a tour of the camp. And part of that tour was to take him to see the ovens where people were cremated. And he told him the story of what was done there. And we all know that there were a number of people, significant hundreds and thousands of people who were cremated there. What you probably do not know is that those remains were compacted into what's called an ash cake, about 2.5 to 2.5 centimeters, a little bit, about an inch. And Nazis would call relatives of these people and tell them, your relative died out of infectious disease, and that's why we had to cremate him. And by the way, you can get the remains of your loved one for a fee. And so this old man gave him one of these ash, ash cakes, put him in a little cigar box, and said, I want you to take this and keep this so that people don't forget what you saw here, so that people remember what happened here. And he took this. Many years go by. In 1986, this gentleman dies, but not before giving his son Joseph Holsby this ash cake and explaining to him what this meant to him and what he had seen that day something that he had not discussed for a number of decades. And Joseph kept that in a little drawer, and after a couple of heart attacks in 2012, he realized he had to do something about this. this. This thing can't just disappear or be thrown away in the trash can. And he talks to his rabbi, 
and North Carolina. The rabbi doesn't know what to do with this, so the rabbi goes to Karen Halpern, Sharon Halpern. Sharon Halpern, at that time and still today, is the daughter of Holocaust survivors and the director of the Center for Holocaust and uh, Human Rights in North Carolina. And over dinner, Sharon brings this up to her husband, Ed Halpern. Now, Ed Halpern could have said, honey, I run a medical school, and it's busy, and it's been seven decades. I have no idea what this inch ash cake means. It, for all I know, is a piece of dust. If you know Ed Halpern, you know that that's not the way he would do this. In fact, Ed took this and made connections with people and scientists in New York who were the ones who developed novel genomic and proteomic techniques to identify the remains of people who died in 9-11. If anybody could identify human remains, it would be these people. So they analyzed, and this article describes in detail what they found in this thing. There's all kinds of things. You can imagine something sitting around for seven decades will accumulate a lot of stuff. But they ultimately came across a number of findings that led them to conclude that this indeed contained a significant amount of human remains. And that's as far as they can get. You can't identify these people. You don't know who they are. But the question then became, what do I do with this ash cake? And how do I dispose of them in a dignified way that makes sense to the relatives, that makes sense to the people, that makes sense to history, and that brings the community together? And so they developed a program where they brought the people together at the synagogue. A community artist actually developed an art exhibit, and the remains were disposed of in the presence of the community where the history was discussed, and people were allowed to bring their memories and so forth. Why do I bring this to you today? Well, because you will be busy, and you can always choose to do what you need to do that day. And Ed, who's one of the busiest persons I know, took an opportunity to take this little thing and describe something interesting, define a mystery, engage in learning, attract people to better understanding history, uniting a community, and ultimately inspiring the person on your stage today to discuss it with a stroke of the pen. You will have plenty of opportunities for the rest of your career to tackle opportunities to do something that is relevant. Plenty of opportunities. As many of the trainees have learned, and all the faculty have learned here today, it has been very difficult to become a doctor but you will find it very easy to do what every other doctor does moving forward. It will be very easy to punch in and out every day. It will be very easy to take care of patients because you've been trained to do that and to do that well. The question is, can you do more than just that? As I've always said, we, we are happy to train physicians, but that's not what we're here for. We're here to train people who have that training to change the world. And an article, a little discovery, bringing people together is so, such a differentiator that can inspire people to do greater things day in and day out. So your job is to think about what the relevance is to this, to awards day. Because the point that I'm trying to make to you is Awards Day is not just about celebrating accomplishments. It's about reminding each one of us of our potential to take advantage of small opportunities to do something great. Take advantage of small opportunities to do something great. That's what Awards Day is all about. Okay, and with that, well, let's start on that somber note. Let's make this fun. Okay, so we, I'm always given the opportunity to celebrate 
the person with the highest attendance to Grand Rounds. Grand Rounds is important. It's crucial. This is the only time of the week where people from the outside can see who we are. You can see a patient today, you can give a lecture tomorrow to family medicine, you can do this to surgery, but it is today where people looking around say, oh, this is the Department of Medicine. That's why Grand Rounds is important. Not only do we learn, but we celebrate each other. Okay? And so it's important to me who comes here, like Dr. Boley, who just crossed the door. Okay? But <clears throat> so this is called the Austin Block Award for highest attendance at Grand Rounds, and it first goes to a faculty member who is <laughs> Dr. Forrest Arnold. Come up here. Come up here, because uh, I'm going to make an announcement today. I think I'm allowed to make this announcement today. Congratulations. Uh, we have this award. I'm being like Chuck now. <laughs> uh, uh, this award has been named for this. I can't remember why this award was named this way. I'm sure we're, we're important person. But frankly, Forrest every year, this award will be named the Forrest Arnold Award starting in 2000. <laughs> Okay, and then we have the residents with the most attendant, and that is Dr. Taylor Buckhart. Where is Dr. Taylor Buckhart? And there he is. If we had two awards to name yours, that would be, but we can't do that. Okay? Go, go, over, there. go over there. And with this, I introduce your moderator of the day, Dr. Jen Cook. Notice how I, I almost messed that one. people problem here. All right, thank you, Dr. Roman. As we proceed with the ceremony, several of you will be called forward to receive a reward. And after doing so, please meet Dr. Roman and Jason across the room for a photo. We'll begin with the awards given by the Internal Medicine Residency Training Program. The in training exam awards are generously sponsored each year by one of our community physicians, Dr. Mary Berry. She established this award in 1997 to recognize the intern with the highest score on the exam, as well as the PGY-2 and the PGY-3 residents who showed the greatest improvements in their scores from the prior year. I'm happy to announce this year's awardees, and when I call your name, please come forward to receive your award from Julia. For the PGY-1 with the highest score on the ITE, the award goes to Dr. Lauren Albers. For the PGY-2, with the most improved ITE score, the award goes to Dr. Raj Danoa. <laughs> and for the PGY-3, with the most improved ITE score, the award goes to Dr. Shafat Ahmed. <laughs> in addition, we wish to honor the residents in the second and third years of residency who received the highest scores in the class on the ITE. For the PGY2 class, recognition goes to Dr. Taylor Burkhart. <laughs> and for the PGY3 class, recognition goes to Dr. Bobby Pierce. We would also like to recognize the divisions representing the areas in which the residents scored the highest on the ITE and the division for whom the score was most improved. We view this as a reflection of your outstanding efforts to teach our residents. The award for the area with the highest score represented on the ITE goes to geriatrics. Is Dr. Furman here? <laughs> And the award for the division with the most improved score on the ITE goes to infectious diseases. There's Dr. Raga. Yeah. Our next awards are the Excellence in Teaching Awards. These awards go to the division, faculty member, and fellow who are chosen by the Internal Medicine House staff for demonstrating excellence in teaching. 
i'm proud to say that the residents have chosen to honor the division of general internal medicine for excellence in teaching um next we have our faculty member chosen by the residents for excellence in teaching this faculty member is going to need to build a hall of fame to store all of his teaching awards he deserves every single one of them congratulations go to dr rodrigo cavalazzi The fellow chosen for the award for excellence in teaching is Dr. Bilal Jalil. <laughs> we will now recognize a few of our residents for their outstanding work. The interns are asked to select the PGY2 resident who best exemplifies excellence in teaching. The winner of this year's Outstanding Teaching Resident Award is known for his intelligence, humility, and integrity, in addition to his dedication to teaching his fellow residents. The award goes to Dr. Alok Bhatt. The award for the most professional resident is chosen by the house staff for the resident who most consistently demonstrates professionalism. We have a tie for the award this year. The first of these residents always maintains a professional demeanor no matter what each day brings, but it also brings a sense of humor that puts his team at ease and makes the experience enjoyable for all. I'm pleased to present this award to Dr. Scott Bills. The other recipient of the Most Professional Resident Award has also been chosen to receive our next award as well. The Outstanding Senior Resident Award is chosen by the house staff and given to the resident who best exemplifies leadership, teaching, and excellent clinical skills. This year's winner has displayed an unwavering commitment to his own education as well as the care of his patients. He's smart, down-to-earth, humble, and kind to all and truly lives a life of service through his practice of medicine. I'm delighted to present both awards to Dr. Taku Bendo. The next award is given by Dr. Ray Knight for resident excellence in the community setting. Dr. Knight was unable to join us today, so I will present this award on his behalf. This year's award for the resident who balances common sense, intellect, and commitment in a community setting goes to Dr. Chandra Fathodi. I'll also take this opportunity to express gratitude to Dr. Knight for his many years of service to the internal medicine residency program as he approaches his retirement. He has played a significant role in the ambulatory medicine curriculum for countless residents over the years, and he asked me to pass on his thanks to all of you for 38 years of support. <laughs> Dr. Anna Burke, a former chief resident in our program, established our next award. The award for quality and safety goes to a resident chosen by the program directors who shows a commitment to the physician's role in quality improvement and patient safety. This year's award goes to Dr. Sanjay Patel. <laughs> it's now time to recognize our residents who will be leading us this year. <laughs> Don't forget your photo op. <laughs> First, I'd like to thank our preliminary interns who work tirelessly to give our patients excellent care and learn as much as they can before moving on to their categorical programs. The prelim interns were recognized on their own special day earlier this week. Please see your program for information about where these doctors are headed next. And let's give this group of hardworking people a round of applause. It's time now to recognize our graduating internal medicine residents. 
Before I begin announcing the graduates, I would like to ask the rest of my program director team to join me here at the front. I would like to sincerely thank Drs. Nancy Kubiak, Clay Smith, Jenny Olges, and Tyler Sharp for being incredible colleagues and friends whose tireless efforts truly keep this residency program going. Please join me in a round of applause and thanks for the associate program directors. <laughs> Graduates, please come forward as your name is called and we'll hold applause until the end. We'll take a class picture once everyone is up front and we will also meet in the lobby to take another class picture immediately following this awards ceremony. And weather permitting, we'll take the photo just outside the doors of this building. So here are our graduates. Shafat Ahmed, GI Fellowship, University of Arizona, Phoenix. Lisan Anders, GI Fellowship, UofL. Chris Angus, Cardiology Fellowship, University of Arizona, Tucson. Evelyn Azabache Orio, Hospitalist, Norton Healthcare. Brittany Cavanaugh, Primary Care, Yale Health Internal Medicine. Corey Cavanaugh, Nephrology Fellowship, Yale University. Chris Clark, Home Critical Care Fellowship, University of South Alabama. Emma Jaffer, GI Fellowship, U of L. Nikhil Cudley, GI Fellowship, University of Florida. Fahad Khan, Hospitalist, U of L. Richard Kim, Home Critical Care Fellowship, U of L. <laughs> he brought his own cheering section today. <laughs> Drew Kaiser, Chief Resident in Quality and Safety, Robley Rex VA. Yash Katari, Chief Medical Resident, U of L. Nathan Liu, GI Fellowship, U of L. Suzanne McGee, Chief Medical Resident, U of L. Chris Miglior, Chief Medical Resident, U of L. Taku Makoran Bindo, Hospitalist, U of L. Andy Patel, GI Fellowship, U of L. Bobby Pierce, Cardiology Fellowship, Allegheny Health Network. John Price, Palm Critical Care Fellowship, U of L. Taj Rahman, Palm Critical Care Fellowship, University of Kentucky. Keith Rogers, Hospitalist, Hardin Memorial Hospital. Bilal Salome, Hemonk Fellowship, University of Florida and Nelson Seabrook, Chief Medical Resident, U of L. Congratulations, Class of 2017. You may start, yeah. Great. I'm going to now recognize our chief residents. And before we go on to our traditional chief residents, um, I wanted to recognize a new position that we have had this year, which is the VA Chief Resident for Quality and Safety. So if we could all give Jacqueline Steele a round of applause for being the inaugural chief president in that position. <laughs> and I'd like to ask now uh, Juliana Brown, Michael Burke, Kristen gonter Aubin, and Patrick McKenzie to come up. I'll be recognizing each of the chiefs tomorrow at our graduation, but I can't resist the opportunity to say a few words right now. This team of chiefs has contributed in countless ways to the residency program and our department. As our quality improvement chief, Juliana, 
has helped us make enduring steps forward in our quest to develop the quality improvement curriculum for the residents and is always willing to help with literally anything i could not be more pleased that she will be staying on faculty here at u of l as the assistant director of the medicine clerkship michael has done amazing work this year expanding the louisville lectures project and getting us ready to sustain it after he departs for his palm critical care fellowship at indiana university we wish him the best of luck and we'll try to make him proud by continuing this incredible venture that he created kristen has been an absolutely outstanding scheduling chief which i maintain must be one of the hardest jobs in the world she made it look easy even though it was not and i offered her a long-term position as scheduling chief but surprisingly <laughs> she has chosen to pursue a hemont fellowship at the moffitt cancer center at the university of south florida and patrick is probably over here thinking if you think scheduling in residence is difficult try scheduling faculty <laughs> i am thankful for patrick's persistence in coordinating an excellent didactic lecture series for our residents and he will excel in his next endeavor as a gi fellow at the university of utah so thank you all for everything and let's give these guys a big round of applause Dr. Workman will now recognize the graduates of the MedPeds residency program. Good morning. It's my pleasure to introduce the graduates of the MedPeds graduating class. Um, the first graduate I have is Doug Ansert, who will be doing primary care in the E-Town Radcliffe area in Kentucky. Next is Mallory Baker, who will also be doing a primary care medpeds in the Tennessee area. Uh, Caitlin Bowman, who will be doing primary care here in the um, Louisville Bullock County area. And Scott Hannon, who will also be doing primary care nearby in Mount Washington area. And Nikki Strecker, who will be doing primary care here in Louisville at the Crestwood office, uh, joining one of our continuity sites and hopefully teaching our residents. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Bishop, would you like to come up for the picture as well? He's our associate program director. And then MedPeds graduates, please also join for the picture afterwards. There's always confusion about that after. I will now present the first award from the Division of General Internal Medicine, Palliative Medicine, and Medical Education before turning things over to Dr. Casper. The residents choose to give this award to one attending each year for excellence in teaching in the ambulatory setting. Regarding this year's award winner, one learner summed it up best in their evaluation of her, and I quote, this is probably not a very helpful evaluation but I can't think of one thing I would recommend Dr. Casper improve upon. She is a great attending, loves teaching, and is very approachable. Anyone who doesn't like working with her needs to have their head examined. <laughs> Please join me in congratulating Dr. Barb Casper. So this was awkward. Usually I present that award, but uh, Jen gave me a heads up that they might not be appropriate this year. So <clears throat> I do get to present the um, best attending award as chosen by our residents in the inpatient setting. So um, some of you may recognize who this is once I start talking about this person. Uh, some of the comments that I saw, by the way, the, the comments were all glowing from the evaluations, but the best medicine doctor I have worked with anywhere. She is thorough yet blazingly efficient good at teaching, always available, and just plain fun to work with. Dr. Mitchell is awesome. She ensured that I was always learning throughout the rotation. She pushed me to learn and practice evidence-based medicine. She stresses physical examination, appropriate diagnostics, and succinct presentations. She listens to the residents' presentations and always provides a new perspective to the case, as well as constructive criticism. She was a spectacular attending. She is a patient. She is patient and provides an excellent example of empathetic bedside manner. I can't emphasize enough how many superlatives were in her evaluations, 
and also just how many times the word fun came up. So that's quite a combination to be an excellent clinician and also provide a fun environment. Dr. Charlene Mitchell. Dr. Hubert will now present the Palliative Medicine Fellows. So this year we had two Palliative Medicine Fellows. Uh, we had Dr. Kimberly Link, who unfortunately is sick this morning and can't join us. And then we also had Dr. Andrew Lally. Um, come on up, Drew. Just stay here. So this year, I think I can speak for all of our faculty in palliative medicine when I say that it was a true pleasure to work with Kim and Drew. They made our jobs incredibly easy and joyful, whether it was in clinic or the hospital or the hospice high C. Um, they were diligent and hardworking, truly compassionate individuals that will truly care for patients and families. Um, they both presented this year um, at the annual assembly of the American Academy of Hospice and Palliative Medicine in Phoenix. Um, Drew presented on palliative sedation therapy, um, sleeping to our death or dying in our sleep. And Kim presented on malignant ascites, uh, a miserable symptom with management complications or management challenges. Uh, they were both well received. Um, I'm pleased that both of them will be staying in Louisville with Hospice and that we can continue to work with them in the future and hopefully they will continue to educate our learners, students, residents, and fellows. So thank you, Drew. <laughs> Dr. Bully will now represent the cardiology division. Thank you, Jan. I would like to call on uh, Glenn Hirsch. We have awards for our graduating fellows. This year we have a record number, seven, as well as interventional fellows. So Dr. Hirsch, director of the fellowship program, will recognize our graduating fellows. Morning, everyone. Um, I don't know if Solihill's here. I'll let him, we'll give him a second to show up and let him introduce uh, the graduating interventional fellow. But for the uh, general fellowship, we had a, a great class. This was uh, the second class since I moved here in 2012 that's graduating. So Wendy Botnar uh, is going to Vanderbilt. She'll be doing a master's in clinical investigation and a cardio-oncology fellowship. Um, Afan Irfan is going to be faculty at Marshall. He did advanced echo training or is completing that now and will run the echo lab there. Matt Keith worked with Dr. Boley for three years. Uh, obtaining a PhD in the lab and then uh, is now completing his clinical training and will be doing interventional cardiology here at the University of Louisville. Uh, Philip Marr along with Wendy were our chief fellows uh, so thank God that they did the schedule as well and anyone else who does schedules. Uh, he's going to be doing electrophysiology at uh, Indiana University. Um, Sadiq Pant uh, is staying here for interventional cardiology and he also did a two plus two track where he did two years of general fellowship and some clinical investigation uh, and will be staying for that extra year of interventional fellowship. He also published a paper during the fellowship that's been cited almost a hundred times in the last year and a half which is pretty remarkable for a recent publication and it's gotten a lot of press as well. Um, is Sohail here? No. So. His fellow, you probably all remember, is Ziad El Nabti. He's interventional. He was a graduate of this program, and he's going to be going to a private practice in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, we have another fellow uh, in our newly accredited heart failure fellowship, uh, Christina Dunbar Matos. She came from private practice in West Virginia at Huntington. They wanted her to get advanced heart failure training, and she'll be returning to the practice there. We are going to present some awards. Yeah, so we are we are going to have our. Uh, um, fellows banquet next Thursday um, and we have awards for our best uh, fellow and faculty but I have uh, issued an executive order prohibiting leaks to the press <laughs> and so uh, this uh, will be uh, announced on Thursday night at the banquet. Uh, 
the, uh, the other thing I want to mention, though, we have our um, holiday party in December, and last year we recognized uh, our best clinical faculty. That's an award we give every year to our clinical faculty that um, excels in all three areas of academic cardiology, which is uh, patient care, research, and teaching. And last year we recognized Dr. Andy De Filippis, who is there next to the breakfast food, uh, who is uh, absolutely outstanding. Andy has been the epitome of academic cardiology, um, absolutely dedicated to scholarship and uh, research and teaching, and at the same time, to a pioneering clinical program such as preventive cardiology and uh, the coronary care unit at Jewish hospitals. He has done a fantastic job, and we are very, very proud to have him here. We also have an award for the outstanding research faculty, uh, of which we have many in uh, the Division of Cardiology, and last year this award went to Dr. Iru Guo, who is sitting there on the back, and Dr. Uh, Liang Feng, who is also sitting there on the back. Uh, they, you probably don't know them. They, um, they run the animal facilities of the Institute of Medical Cardiology. Uh, they make it possible for the university to receive millions and millions and millions and millions of NIH grants every year and they don't get a lot of visibility, they don't get a lot of credit, and I think we should uh, give them a big applause to recognize their work. <laughs> Dr. Winters will now represent the Division of Endocrinology. Morning. Uh, Dr. Aziz Rahman will be completing the fellowship in endocrinology, metabolism, and diabetes, and he was unanimously selected as the best graduating fellow. <laughs> he's become a very fine. <laughs> Thanks for the laugh. Uh, he, he's uh, become a very fine teacher uh, and uh, clinician, uh, and is focused in thyroid disease. And all welcome to attend his seminar next week in the. Baxter uh, 038 on Wednesday at 4 o'clock about amiodarone induced thyroid disease. Uh, Dr. Rahman will be uh, joining the faculty as assistant professor uh, at uh, the Texas Tech University School of Medicine, uh, and sorry, the Paul Foster School of Medicine at Texas Tech University, a new medical school. Uh, and we wish him well there, and we look forward to many years of hearing about his accomplishments. Thank you, Dr. Rahman. Dr. Perajuli will represent the GI division. No? Yes, yes. <laughs> I don't know why I thought you'd be on that side. So it's my great pleasure to uh, congratulate and celebrate our four graduating fellows. Uh, uh, Dr. Cardi Reddy, come on up here, Cardi. So Reddy, uh, Dr. Reddy is from Alabama. She did her residence in New York City and then came to Louisville and loved Louisville so much that she's going to stay in private practice in town. Uh, John, John is from John is a Louisville native. He's going to join private practice across the river in southern Indiana. Amar. Amar is uh, following our strong tradition and uh, hepatology inspired by Dr. McLean, Dr. Marsano, and Dr. Smart. He's doing an extra year of uh, transplant hepatology fellowship in Michigan on Ann Arbor. And uh, Samir Vermani is our uh, other graduating fellow. He's going into private practice in northern Kentucky, but I think he realized that in private practice he would not get any vacation, so he's trying to accumulate his vacation in all of June. <laughs> These, these, these guys did a great job. We're really proud of them, and uh, I know they're all going to do a fantastic job. Congratulations. <laughs> and, then, and then Dr. Hassan and the other co-fellows are going to uh, present the teacher of the year. I'd like to call Dr. Marsano up to help present this award.
so each year the gastroenterology fellows vote on a faculty member to receive the lewis marzano teaching award. this distinction is awarded to a faculty member who shows excellence in education and clinical training and reflection of the master clinician for which this award is named dr. lewis marzano. i am pleased to announce that this year's recipient is our program director dr. parajuli. dr. parajuli's influence to the clinical education of the fellows is tremendously appreciated whether it's endoscopic training at the va or clinical training while in service dr. parajuli has greatly contributed to the education of fellows at all levels with comments this year such as great endoscopic teacher to a model physician it's my honor to give this award dr. parajuli. Dr. Raghuram will present the uh, ID fellows. I have one graduating fellow, Dr. Mark Burns. Come on up, Mark. <laughs> You're up. <laughs> So you, many of you might know Dr. Burns from his many years at the VA ER. He decided it was time for a career change and here he is <coughs> two years later. Uh, traditionally, we've, we've actually been honored to have fellows join us as faculty. Many of you know Dr. Bevin is with us. Of course, Dr. Forrest Arnold is still with us um, and Mark will be doing the same. He will be joining us as faculty this July. So please join me in wishing him every success in his new career. Dr. Klucker will now represent the Oncology Division. Good morning. I think it's time for our three graduating fellows to come up here. Come from here. Dr. Miller, over here. What a change from cremation to graduation. I was wondering how you shift that. So. <laughs> Well, it's a pleasure to announce the graduation of our three fellows. I start ladies first, with Dr. Kimberly Chisak. Uh, she's had, had an interest in hematology ever since I've known her for the last four or five years, and now she's going to Mayo Clinic to be a subspecialist in benign hematology, which is a huge honor. And there's only one person in the country that is selected for this position, and it happens to be Camilla. So congratulations. We're very proud of you. Then I continue with Dr. Asadi, Amir, the best dressed fellow that I've ever met. <laughs> Very funny to work with. And he's interested in neuro-oncology, which is a very tough field, as you can imagine. He will have some subspecialty training in Duke and then will move on to the Norton Cancer Institute in private practice. So congratulations. <laughs> And last and absolutely not least, our chief fellow, Jorge, Dr. Diaz. Um, he's been the best chief fellow that we've had in all these years and uh, probably the best oncology fellow that I've met. So I would have no problems being treated myself or have my family treated by him. He goes to the city of rocket scientists, German rocket scientists in Huntsville, Alabama and goes to private practice. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Dr. Saad and Rivas Perez will represent the Palm Critical Care Division. <laughs> um, I'm going to ask, um, I saw David, where's David? Uh, and, and Vina to step up. Um, so this is a very special class. I've been here, it's going to be three years in August. So this is the first class that I start working with. So um, I'm going to start with David. David went to med school in um, Indiana University. Um, I've known David for a long time. Um, he started residency when I started fellowship at Ohio State. And now, and then he moved here and I decided that I missed him too much. So I decided to come <laughs> here. Um, um, David has um, spent um, his three years in fellowship um, focusing in interventional pulmonology. He's been doing a lot of research for the past three years. He recently got a paper published, I think two weeks ago or a week ago. Um, and um, we're very proud of him. He's going to do interventional pulmonary fellowship at the University of North Carolina. So we're definitely going to miss him and congratulations. 
And then Vinay, um, I've decided not to pronounce your last name because I'm going to kill it. Um, so um, um, Vinay did uh, med school in India. He came, he did residency in Yukon and came here for fellowship. He spent um, most of his last two years of fellowship focusing in ICU research and um, ventilator weaning protocols and, and techniques. Um, he'll be staying in town and, and joining Louisville pulmonary um, um, care um, and we're happy to have him as a colleague in town. So congratulations to both. I'm going to introduce the uh, graduating seat fellow. So we have one fellow, uh, Dr. Yeni Bravo. She's here. Okay. Well, well, Yeni came from New York. She's originally from Peru, uh, but she did her internal medicine and geriatric uh, fellowship uh, in New York and came to us, of course, for uh, one year of sleep fellowship. Uh, she did an outstanding job and she will be uh, going to New Mexico for a hospitalist. She would be a hospitalist initially, but then she would do sleep uh, after that. Uh, but uh, congratulations. Are there any further awards or announcements? Okay. Well, please stay in your seats. Thank you very much for attending Awards Day 2017, and I want to thank uh, my program coordinators, Julia Klinkenbeard and Rita Matnich, as well as Dee King, who make all events such as this possible. I'm honored to serve as program director and work with all of you, and uh, right now we're going to stay in our seats so that Jason can take a group picture, so have a seat if you're not, if you're not in a seat. And um, after that, we'll be adjourned, and I'll meet the class, uh, the residency classes of 2017 outside for a picture. Thank you very much. One last word. Thank you all. You have a good Thursday. Uh, I started with Halpern, so I'm going to finish with his quote that I mentioned to you before. Ed one day told me that researchers can do research in industry and practitioners can do good care and private practice. But training doctors is something that only medical schools do well. And based on what I've seen today, I want to thank the faculty and the staff for the excellence in generating great doctors. Thank you.